Today we're going to review valence electrons, how to determine the number of valence electrons and draw the Lewis dot structures for those valence electrons, and then we're going to learn how to draw Lewis dot structures for covalently bonded molecules. So as you recall, before vacation we talked about valence electrons, and we discussed how the main group elements you can determine the number of valence electrons based on their group number. So for the alkali metals, they're in group 1, so they have one valence electron. The alkaline earth metals are in group 2, they have two valence electrons. Four elements in groups 13 through 18, their number of valence electrons is their group number minus 10. So in the boron family, you've got three valence electrons. And in the carbon family, there are four valence electrons. Nitrogen and the elements in that family have five valence electrons. Oxygen down to polonium have six valence electrons. The halogens have seven valence electrons. And these noble gases have eight valence electrons. The only one that is different is helium. Helium has two valence electrons. So moving forward, drawing the Lewis dots around the element has a specific location. So we have eight valence electrons that all elements want to get. Based on the number of valence electrons, we'll determine the number of dots. So for instance, um, the element X, we're just using X as a generic element, if that element has one valence electron, we would put one dot, and it would be in that location. If it had two valence electrons, like the alkaline earth metals, we'd have two dots. And three, four, now notice for elements in groups 1 through 14, there's four valence electrons. They are not paired up. Once we start with the nitrogen family with five valence electrons, we start pairing up the electrons. So that's five, six, seven, and eight. Let's try one. Oxygen. How many valence electrons does oxygen have? If you look at your periodic table, you notice that oxygen has six valence electrons. We're going to draw those six valence electrons as one, two, three, four, five, six. And there's the six valence electrons around oxygen. Uh, let's look at sodium. Sodium is an alkali metal. It's got one valence electron, so you're only going to see one dot. I hope that refreshes your memory from before vacation, because now we're going to start talking about drawing Lewis dot structures for molecules. We're going to learn how to take the formula for the molecule determine the number of valence electrons in the entire molecule, and then we're going to learn how to choose the center atom and draw the structure. So the first thing we need to know is how to count up all the valence electrons in the entire molecule. So for instance, if I had a molecule such as CO2. I would want to know how many valence electrons are in that entire molecule. I know carbon has four valence electrons. I know each oxygen has six valence electrons. There are two of them. So that's 12, 16 total valence electrons. And that's how you determine the number of valence electrons for a molecule. Uh, let's take a look at another molecule. Um, let's take a look at an anion, for instance. That is a negatively charged group of elements. So let's look at PO4 with a 
3 minus charge. I want to know how many valence electrons are in that molecule. So I would look at the periodic table. I'd notice that phosphorus has 5 valence electrons. Oxygen, again, has 6 valence electrons. And there are 4 of them. I have this charge up here that I'm going to have to account for. Because electrons are negatively charged, that's why I have a negative charge there, I have to add three electrons to my total budget. So this whole molecule would have 32 valence electrons. Now, once I know how many valence electrons are in my budget, I then move on to choose a center atom. So out of all of the molecules, sorry, out of all of the elements in the molecule, one of them is going to be in the center, and the rest of the atoms are going to surround that center. So how you choose the center, if carbon is present, carbon is always going to be in the middle. If carbon is not present, it's always going to be the least electronegative atom. However, hydrogen might be the least electronegative atom. Make a note, hydrogen is never, ever in the center of the molecule. Once you have the center picked out, write the center atom in, on the paper and then take all of the other atoms and write it around that center. You're going to then place a dashed line between the center and the ligands. Those are the surrounding atoms. The dashed line is going to represent a bonding pair of electrons. Add the remaining electron dots in pairs around the ligands until each has an octet. Hydrogen is only going to get a duet. If there are any leftover electrons from the budget, you're going to add them to the center atom. If the center atom doesn't have an octet, you're going to move a pair of electrons from one of the ligands to share with the center, making a multiple bond. I know that sounds confusing. The best way to go about it is by example. So let's take a look at water. Very determine our budget. Hydrogen has one valence electron. There are two hydrogens. Each oxygen has six valence electrons. That's a total of eight valence electrons in my budget. Each atom is contributing electrons to the bond. So oxygen is my center because hydrogen is never my center. Surround the oxygen with the two hydrogen atoms. We're going to add our bonds, our dashed lines, between the center atom and the ligand. That is going to represent two electrons, which is the bond. So again, I've accounted for four of my eight electrons. Where do the remaining electrons go? We're going to put pairs of electrons around the center atom here because hydrogen only gets two. It already has two. So the remaining electrons go around the center atom as pairs of dots. So there are the two above and below. Make sure that you've accounted for all eight electrons, which is in your budget. So there's two at each of the dashed lines. That's four. And then each pair of dots, there's the other four. So you've accounted for eight. Following the octet rule, the center atom has eight electrons surrounding it. Each hydrogen atom 
has a duet or two electrons surrounding it. And that's exactly what hydrogen wants because it's got to fill the 1s orbital. It's the only orbital available for hydrogen, which is why it violates the octet rule. Let's try another one. CCl4. We've got a lot more electrons here. Carbon has four valence electrons. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, and there are four of them. There are 32 valence electrons in our electron budget for this molecule. Pick the center. Carbon is present, so carbon is my center atom. I've got four other atoms surrounding carbon. They're all chlorine. So I'm going to draw them surrounding my center atom, just like that. Follow the rules. Connect each one of the ligands, the surrounding atom, with a dashed line. Each dashed line represents two electrons. So how many electrons have I used? Right, eight. Two, four, six, eight. The remaining electrons are going to go around the center, around the ligands in pairs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four dots surrounding. Now what you want to make sure you've used all of your electrons. So every single one of my surrounding atoms has an octet 2, 4, 6, 8. The center atom has an octet 2, 4, 6, 8. And I've accounted for all 32 of my valence electrons. Let's try another atom. The one that I started teaching you how to figure out the electron budget for, CO2. So again, carbon has four valence electrons. Each oxygen has two valence electrons. Sorry, there are two oxygens. Each one has six. So that's 6, 12, 13, 16 valence electrons. That's what I have to work with. That's what's in my budget. I cannot add any more. I cannot take any away. I've got to make sure that every single one of those atoms has an octet and we've used 16 electrons. So, I figured out my budget. I know carbon is in the center. Carbon's always in the center. And I've got two oxygen atoms. Each one of those oxygen atoms is going to be on either side of the carbon. It's got to surround my center atom. So again, let's follow the rules, and I will warn you now, I'm going to have to erase, and I'm going to have to move things around here. Each carbon atom bonds, each carbon bonds to the oxygen, so there's four valence electrons. Following the rules, the extra electrons go around the oxygen, goes around the ligands. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I've used all sixteen electrons. I've got each oxygen atom with an octet but what I don't have is my center atom with an octet. So I'm going to have to move 
a pair of electrons to the center so that oxygen still has an octet, but it's sharing an extra pair with carbon. When I do that, I'm going to end up with four electrons shared between carbon and oxygen. But that still doesn't get me an octet for carbon. So I'm going to have to do the same thing on the other side. That pair of electrons to the center and sharing it with the carbon. Now, if I look, carbon has an octet, 2, 4, 6, 8. Each line represents two electrons. Oxygen also has an octet. So what I've accounted for here is a multiple bond between the carbon and the oxygen. Each electron is not owned specifically by an individual atom. When it bonds, when it forms a molecule, the electrons are free to roam around the entire molecule and be shared so that every atom gets an octet, except for hydrogen, who again gets a duet. So I hope you understand this. I hope that you'll be able to complete your homework assignment. And when I get back to school, I'll be able to go through this with you and make sure that you totally understand. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me.